it's already Tecmo from the future. I'm going to be showing up again later on in this video, so don't worry about that. But I do want to make a small disclaimer. I've been calling the new Unreal Tournament Unreal Tournament 2017, when really I meant Unreal Tournament 2014, but you get the point. That's a gaffe on me. So just switch those two around in your mind, okay? All right. Anywho, on to the video. Well, it's official. Unreal Tournament's dead. I'm actually having a bit of a struggle trying to personally cope with this one, mostly because Unreal Tournament has been a massive influence on my life. It actually inspired a lot of the, you know, cyberpunk stories that I want to tell at some point. Now, I know that the player base is small for Unreal Tournament 2017, and practically non-existent for some of the older ones, but seeing as though it's the end of an era, it's a little depressing. I mean, there's still a small sliver of hope for one of the games, but as far as I'm aware, the only two that are probably going to even stick around are Unreal Tournament 2004 and Unreal Tournament 3. And the only reason why 2004 isn't 100% on the chopping block is because the source code for the master server exists. So you can just host a server like that. And for Unreal Tournament 1999 and Unreal Gold, yeah, I guess the dedicated server client exists for those. So there's that too. But damn, dude, this actually sucks. So, let me give a little bit of context. Epic Games, the developers of games like Jazz Jackrabbit, Unreal Tournament, Fortnite, and a whole bunch of other stuff, have decided that they wanted to abandon Unreal Tournament. And it's not news that the new Epic Games doesn't really care about that franchise, but at the same time, they keep making little calling cards to it in Fortnite, so there's still some love for that one. But I'm gonna be honest, most of the people that play Fortnite probably haven't even heard of Unreal Tournament, so yeah. Now, it's not just the new Unreal Tournament, it's basically all of them, like I mentioned earlier. So I actually made a bit of a compatibility chart explaining which ones will still have which features and what to do with these ones. On the left side, we have Unreal Gold, Unreal Tournament 1999, Unreal 2 The Awakening, Unreal Tournament 2003, Unreal Tournament 2004, Unreal Tournament 3, and Unreal Tournament 2017. Okay, first question. Will these games be purchasable on Steam? For 90% of these, no. There's actually a strange exception for Unreal Tournament 3 that I'll get into later. But, at one point, all of these games, with the exception of Unreal Tournament 2017 and Unreal Tournament 2003, were at one point purchasable on Steam. However, that is no longer a game that you can get on Steam. If you did buy them on Steam, however, they are still in your library, and hopefully Epic Games will not take away your right to play them. Okay, and for our next question, will these be able to be purchased on GOG, or good old games? Well, as of the time of recording this video, they are still available. However, I can't say what will happen to these down the line. Next question. Will these games be purchasable on EGX? Again, just like Steam, 90% of these will be unavailable, with the exception of maybe Unreal Tournament 3, but I'm not too sure about that. Can you purchase these games physically? Thank God that most of these games are old as hell. Yes, you can actually. However, will they be playable? I couldn't tell you, as some of these games do require PC CD keys. So, sorry, I'm not exactly sure how PC versions will be able to run. However, even though these ones are very unreliable, the console versions are still a thing you can buy on the internet. So, I do recommend checking those out if you still have the old consoles. Or, you could always turn to emulation if you really, really wanted to do that. Unreal Tournament did indeed have a Dreamcast and PS2 port. Now, with these next questions, we will have to make the assumption that you can still authenticate these via CD key or a serial code of some sort. Will these games be playable offline if the game is still installed? or if the game is being run on a physical version. Absolutely! Most of these games will, as they do have campaigns, and on top of that, some of them actually have online bot matches, so hey, feel free to try them out if you still have the games. 
Now, the only problem I can really see is with Unreal Tournament 2017 and Unreal Tournament 3. Now, I'll get into why Unreal Tournament 2017 won't work later, but with Unreal Tournament 3, the thing about that is that it had a secondary little account thing that you had to tie to your Steam account, or that you just had to tie to Unreal Tournament 3 in general. Basically, it was an EGS account before EGS accounts were a thing, so do keep that in mind. Now, with Unreal Tournament 2017, that was only accessible through the Epic Games launcher, so if you don't have it through EGL, you won't be able to play the game. And even then, they're planning on gutting the game entirely, so it's not necessarily reliable that you'll be able to play that game at all in the coming future. And the only reason why I keep saying I'm unsure about the CD keys working is because I'm not sure if they're connected to an authentication server or not. I mean, a lot of older Adobe software is like that, and a lot of games are like that, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to play those like that. Hopefully you can. Will the game still be able to be played online via community-run servers or local area networks? Now, assuming that you can still authenticate the games, yes, with the exception of three of those, those being Unreal 2 The Awakening, Unreal Tournament 3, and Unreal Tournament 2017. Now, the only reason why I call Unreal 2 The Awakening to the stand on this one is because the only way I remember being able to play XMP, which is short for Extended Multiplayer, is you had to either go through an official server network or you could only play via LAN. I don't know how true that is, but I'm still going to leave it on the table for that. Also, just letting you know, you can play it offline, but only the campaign. As XMP did not have AI, you could probably find an add-on that does add AI though. And now for our last question. Will these games be able to be played on an official Epic Games server? Well, for the most part, no, and if they could, then we wouldn't be having this discussion. There are, however, two exceptions that I can think of, and those being Unreal Tournament 2003 and Unreal Tournament 3, and the only reason why I say Unreal Tournament 2003 is because Unreal Tournament 2003 has largely been forgotten, even by Epic Games, so who knows if they'll even remember to shut down the servers. That's just up to luck at this point, but most likely they will be gutted. And Unreal Tournament 3, supposedly there was some rumor about some free-to-play version being leaked on Steam, but I don't know how true that is, so I'm still leaving that up to interpretation. Now there is one giant red flag on this chart. As if this isn't already very bad, there's one specific thing that is horrible, and I mean horrible, that is on this chart. Look at Unreal Tournament 2017! Not purchasable on Steam, not purchasable on GOG, you not purchasable on EGS, and even if you wanted to get it, you won't be able to play it. There's no physical version, it's not playable offline, it's not playable on online community servers, and it's directly only linked to an online master server that is going to be shut down. This game will die, End of discussion. You will never be able to play this game again, and if there is a way to play it again, which, again, 99.9% .9 chance that there isn't, hopefully some community member was willing to break the end user license agreement of Unreal Tournament, and they will host something, or rebuild a client. But for now, that game's gone. Gone, gone. No way to play it ever again after the shutoff date. And as a video game preservationist, I have to drill in how depressing that is. There is now just one game wiped off the face of the earth. Forever! I recommend that everybody starts downloading Unreal Tournament 2017 before it goes. And I recommend that people start playing it again until the servers are fully shut down. We need to show this game some love because damn Unreal Tournament 2017 had a hard life. And in case you're wondering how much of a hard life it had, here's a clip from one of my older videos talking about it.
characters for the longest time. The third installment of Unreal Tournament was made in 2007, which popularized the engine to no end. A good example of this engine being used is Borderlands, which is a game made by Gearbox and published by 2K. We wouldn't get a proper Unreal Tournament game until about 2014, which is seven years after the last one. Keep in mind, Epic Games was kind of giving us some blue balls by not really talking about it that much. Unreal Tournament, or Unreal Tournament 4, was shown off in pre-alpha in 2014. The game was outsourced to a large community of Unreal Engine modders and developers to work on the game. The game sadly had its final patch in 2017. After the 2017 patch, the game was silently cancelled for the developers, well, the main developers of the project, to continue supporting Fortnite with new content. Yeah, do you see what I mean now? This game has had it rough. Now, here's a little bit of a disclaimer on this one. If you by chance purchased anything for Unreal Tournament 2017, I'm not sure why you would, but you do you. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. You are entitled to a refund for any and all purchases made within the last 180 days of this announcement. So I suggest submitting a support ticket ASAP. Now so far, I have mostly been talking about the Unreal series of games. However, I do have to say that this does affect more than just those games. Other games that will be sunset include Rock Band, Rock Band 2, Rock Band 3, The Beatles Rock Band, and Green Day Rock Band. All of those will also be hit, meaning that any other purchases via online stores or any DLCs that you're looking for, I recommend buying them now while you still can. The same thing goes for the downloadable music for those titles. Now other games also include A Thousand Tiny Claws, Dance Central 1, 2, and 3, Monsters Probably Stole My Princess, and supersonic acrobatic rocket-powered battle cars. And for other reference, this one's gonna piss you off, okay? I 100% guarantee this. The Mac and Linux ports of Had a Faux Boyfriend, the um, pigeon dating sim thing that was made as a joke, is also not on EGS anymore. However, if you did download them, you can still play them. However, while all of this is problematic, we have an even larger problem on our hands. I mentioned that Unreal Tournament 2017 will be shut down completely. However, the line doesn't just stop at UT 2017. That isn't the only game that will have its services completely gutted. Other games that will be shut down entirely are Drop Mix, Rock Band Blitz, Sing Space, and the Rock Band Companion app, all of which will be shut down effective January 24th. This includes the other titles that were mentioned earlier. One game, however, will be dropped even earlier than the rest, and I especially think that you should get a refund on those purchases for this game. It is a mobile-based RPG known as Battle Breakers. If you enjoy Battle Breakers, sorry, but the EOL on this game is December 30th. Huh. That's actually ironic. It's the same day that Flash died. Hmm. You know, it's really funny that all of this is basically a result of Fortnite being very successful and Tim Sweeney being a huge piece of shit. So, I mean, case closed. Anywho, thanks for- Did you miss me? It's me again, Tecmo from the future. Oh, come on, don't act so surprised. You knew I was coming back. I literally told you at the beginning of the video that I would. Anyways, so this was originally where I was going to end the video. I was going to call Tim Sweeney a massive piece of shit and then, you know, go off with my entire spiel on uh, like, subscribe, comment, whatever. But then it dawned on me. I literally made a video about this entire topic not that long ago, specifically talking about Black Ops 4. Now, I'm starting to realize that this is actually a really large and problematic trend within the games industry, and so I'm going to go a little bit more in depth with it. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to continue rolling the footage in the background, and I'm just going to replace past Tecmo and keep going with the video.
So here we go. The amount of games that have been absolutely guillotined this year is astronomical. Take a look at Titanfall 1. It's still playable, kind of. You can't purchase the game anymore on online stores, so you have to rely on physical copies of the game. And yet Respawn Entertainment hasn't done anything about the issues that were plaguing the game. And it looks like Titanfall 2 is gonna go the exact same way. Ubisoft completely destroyed Far Cry 3's ability to connect to multiplayer and co-op services, meaning that you now cannot play the co-op campaign and that it's just left in the dust. Granted that co-op campaign wasn't good, not even close, just watch Racefix's video about it, but it still sucks that people can't play it. And the same thing goes for the older Assassin's Creed titles and the Splinter Cell games. In the case of Ubisoft, this also means that DLC is just meant to be played online, and it will also be shut down completely, meaning that you just got duped on not just purchasing a full-fledged game, but purchasing extra content for the game that you purchased earlier. And in some cases, you will be locked out of the DLC entirely, rendering it inaccessible. The games that Ubisoft cut off were Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Far Cry 3, Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands, and Silent Hunter 5. Oh, and don't forget Ghost Recon Future Soldier. That was another one that Ubisoft put on the chopping block. Those games were completely cut off, and one of those was destroyed from Steam entirely, and that being Assassin's Creed Liberation HD, meaning that players only had about two months to really play the game before it was rendered unplayable. Oh, what, you want more examples? Well, Anno 2070 is another one, so is Rayman Legends and Space Junkies, which was a game from 2019, by the way. That got shut down, and it was a VR title. Zombie U is completely offline, and that's... that's only Ubisoft. Forza Street, which is a mobile Forza game, that was shut off on April 11th of 2022. And Electronic Arts also slams the hammer down on other titles too. Now here's what EA ended up doing. They took down Army of Two, 40th Day, and Devil's Cartel. And for those of you guys who have never played an Army of Two game, it was essentially EA's answer to Gears of War. And it was a game that actually stood up pretty well in a vast array of cover shooters that were coming out. And Dragon Age Origins multiplayer screenshot server was taken offline on the same day that Army of Two was. Now, that was on October 20th of 2022, but I bet most of you guys didn't hear about that, huh? The same thing goes for Command & Conquer Red Alert 3, and Tiberium Wars, and Kane's Wrath. Those were taken offline on November 9th of 2022. The same thing goes for Mercenaries 2, World in Flames. Only 21 days later, Onrush would be shut down. And the next wave of shutdowns will take effect on January 19th of 2023. And the games that are included on that are Mirror's Edge, the original, NBA Jam on Fire Edition, Gatling Gears, and Shank 2. Oh, and let's not forget that in February of 2023, other games will also be shut down. Mostly Medal of Honor 2011, Medal of Honor Airborne, and Medal of Honor Warfighter. All of those will go down on February 16th. And as to whether or not these will even be able to be purchased anymore? I don't know, genius. Take a guess. Probably not. Oh, and to the Madden fans, you're not untouchable either. Madden 2018 and Madden 2019 will be shut down in March of 2023. Four days after this video is uploaded, Sega plans on delisting a couple of games on the 3DS eShop. One of them is a Japanese exclusive. And for fuck's sake, NBA 2K21 will lose online features on December 31st, 
and will no longer be available for purchase on January 1st. Now about a year ago, I talked about these games shutting down, and they were shut down earlier this year, back in January, and those games being the original Halo games on the Xbox 360, including, but not limited to, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, Halo Reach, Halo Wars, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, Halo 4, and Halo Spartan Assault. While you still can play these games on MCC, except for Spartan Assault, that's a separate purchase. Playing the classics on older consoles online is now completely impossible. Do not even attempt to do it. Not gonna happen. And now, it also locks people out of certain achievements in those games, like the Vidmaster challenges. Nope, you can't do that anymore. Have fun! Xbox Live, it doesn't exist for those games anymore. And those games, like I said, were taken offline in January 13th of 2022. Why does everybody keep choosing January 13th or January 18th for this shit? I don't know! They just do! I also talked about Stadia not too long ago and how that was being shut off and how there were five Stadia exclusives that are just going away now unless they're ported to other systems, which I don't know if they have been yet. I'm hoping they have, but I'm not sure about them. Look, I could go on and on and on about how big of a problem shutting down these old games and services is, especially for those who intend on checking it out, but I think you get the point already. Now, going back to Titanfall, that game isn't even 10 years old yet, and it managed to be delisted on all online storefronts. No game is safe at that point. I always struggled on thinking about making a video talking about video game preservationism and arguments for video game preservationism, and I was gonna sugarcoat it and be like, ah, oh, yeah, you get to meet some awesome people, you get to, you know, you, you get to, like, check out old prototypes, and you get to check out old games. I mean, I'm heavily affiliated with one of those communities, specifically TalonBrave.info. By the way, wonderful people there, I just gotta say, the community's awesome. But, I can't really sugarcoat it past that. All I can really say is, your games are gonna disappear. Nothing is safe. You have to do something to protect these older games. Archive them. Upload them to some website. I don't know and I don't care. As long as they're out there and they're playable and no company can just absolutely destroy them, then that's a win. And if people can mod them to bring them back to life, that's an even bigger win. There will be entire generations of people that are not going to be able to play some of these games. And that hurts, man. That saddens me. You have no idea how much that saddens me. There is going to be an entire large group of people that will never hear about how magical Unreal Tournament was, or how awesome the Medal of Honor games were, or how, how absolutely wonderful Mirror's Edge was. God, imagine your favorite game dying because some big ass fucking company decided it was its time to go. Imagine that. Guess what, Destiny 2 players? That's gonna happen. Guess what, Apex players? That's gonna happen at some point. Rainbow Six Siege? Sure, there's still a lot of people playing it, but I'm gonna tell you this right now, it'll happen. Same to you, League of Legends players, or Valorant players, or CSGO players. Sure, you got the numbers now, but give it about another 10 years and your game may or may not become irrelevant. And it's going to break your heart. Okay, now that I have fully calmed down, some of these games are old, and some of these games are not the best. They're, some of them are just not fun. Like Unreal 2 The Awakening, that's a good example of not a fun game. But I still find it important to preserve them 
for those who want to check it out in the future. And I just wish that larger game companies understood this and didn't meet this with such hostility. I'm looking at you, Nintendo and Atlas. I'm looking at you. It's almost completely impossible to not just tell people to pirate games because of them shutting down at some point. While I originally intended for this video to specifically be about Epic Games and how fucking awful of a person Tim Sweeney is, and believe me, Tim Sweeney is still an awful person. However, Epic Games is just one small piece of a much larger problem, and that problem is video games under capitalism and how capitalism is just a machine that just destroys absolutely everything that it touches and rips any artistic value out of it. God! 2022 has been an absolutely horrendous year for video games. However, I guess here's to hoping that 2023 is better, but who knows, I could be completely wrong in thinking that anything positive is gonna happen in 2023. I don't even know at this point. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, things get better, and hopefully, people start to cause enough of an uproar for these massive companies that they have to keep these games online, or at least give it to the modding community, because damn it, I'm tired of seeing games that people like disappear because of some big wig saying, this isn't making us enough money. God. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, whatever. I'm fed up. Alright, I'm fed up. Just support the channel. Support the channel and support a game preservation community or something. Do your part. That's all I can say. I hope you enjoyed this video. Tecmo out.